Good day grade 12s. My name is Viola from the Distinction Bound Student. I'd like to welcome you to lesson 87, a lesson that I've been referring to in many videos in the past. In this lesson, we are going to talk about the North-South Divide. Please comment, like and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to click the notification bell for you to get notified every time we post. I would like to take this opportunity to thank more than 8,910 people who are currently subscribed to this channel. Help us get to 10k. It would be a huge milestone for us. Let's get into the lesson. As usual, we start off by revising our homework given in lesson 86 linked down below. Question 1. What is fronting? Fronting in economic context is when a business employs previously disadvantaged people in management positions to pretend that the company is triple BEE compliant. Please take note of the word pretend. So the business wants it to look like they comply but it's not really the case because they are just putting a puppet in front. And the puppet in this case happens to be black. Question 2. How does the government assist black-owned firms to improve their core competitiveness? The DTI or in full, Department of Trade and Industry is driving BEE as a fundamental factor of the business environment in South Africa through the following. National Empowerment Fund, Triple BEE Code of Good Practice, Improved Access to Finance and Capital, Information and Advice, Promotion of Entrepreneurship Among Women and the Youth, and finally Preferential Procurement System. Question 3. Does the South African policy on BEE conform to international best practice? Substantiate your answer. Yes, because this policy is supported by the United Nations and the World Bank, especially on empowering indigenous people. That's it for our homework, let's dive into the lesson. We have finally gotten to Unit 5, which is the last unit under economic growth and development. The topic for today is, the North-South Divide. The North-South Divide refers to the gap between developed countries and developing countries. Developed countries are mainly found in the Northern Hemisphere while developing countries are mainly found in the Southern Hemisphere. There is a gap between rich and poor countries. The North, with one quarter of the world population, controls four-fifths of the income earned anywhere in the world. 90% of the manufacturing industries are owned by and located in the North. Inversely, the South, with three-quarters of the world population has access to one-fifth of the world income. Let me break down the gap that exists between the North and the South. If one quarter gets four-fifths and three-quarters get one-fifths, it's like sharing one million rands to 100 people. From the one million rands, you give 800,000 rands to 25 people from the North and 200000 rands to 75 people from the South. Each person in the North gets 32,000 rands while each person in the South gets 2,666 rands. That means in the North they get 12 times more than people in the South. Do you see how big the gap is? The South serves as a source for raw materials to the North, eager to acquire their own independent resource bases, subjected large portions of the Global South to direct colonial rule between 1850 and 1914. As nations become economically developed, they may become part of the North, regardless of geographic location, while any other nations which do not qualify for developed status are in effect deemed to be part of the South, also regardless of geographical location. Let's now look at unequal standards of living. The United Nations seeks to reduce poverty through its Millennium Development Goals. The UN uses the Human Development Index to describe the quality or standard of living using three indicators which are, life expectancy, education and per capita income. Kayleen will now give us the difference between the North and the South. Over to you Kayleen. Thank you Viola. Good day grade 12s. We will compare the North and South using the following. Standards of living, globalization inequalities, environment, sustainable development and just some other miscellaneous differences. Per capita GDP is high in the North and low in the South. Per capita income is when total income in a country is divided by the number of people in that country. If the figure is low, then it indicates low living standards. Life expectancy is higher in the North than it is in the South. What do you think contributes to low life expectancy in the South? To answer that question, I'll give you a very recent example that happened in Hamansko Pretoria. There was a cholera outbreak a few weeks ago which claimed lives of some individuals. Watch this. Yes, we are tired as people of Hamaskrala. The water is tea. Is tea now. 
Cause the stomach now run. We run, we run, we run. This is the water. This is the water. We are tired. We are tired because when you go to toilet, prr, 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 the whole day you sit. I'm sure you can see that they are tired of diarrhea and it's all because of dirty water. Such outbreaks are not common in developed countries because their water is cleaner and they can afford bottled water more than we do, basically because their income is higher. If there was to be that kind of outbreak in the north, their health infrastructure is more equipped to deal with the outbreak meaning chances of any fatalities would be slim. So that's just one narrow area that shows that our lives can be cut short simply because we are in the south and there are more diseases that can claim our lives than in the north and also we don't have adequate infrastructure to fight those diseases. And if you are wondering what the numbers on life expectancy are. In the north, life expectancy is 75 years and in the south it's 48 years. You see how huge the difference is. On globalization inequalities, there is high economic growth rates in the North and low growth rates in the South. Firms in the North receive subsidies from their governments, which makes them globally competitive in manufacturing while the manufacturing industry is often smaller than the primary sector where they rely so much on extraction of raw materials. Poverty levels are low in the North and high in the South. With regards to the environment, in the north there is mass consumption of oil and coal, which leads to the damaging of the ozone layer, toxic waste, air, water, and noise pollution. The south focuses more on agriculture, mining, fishing, and forestry, which has a negative effect on the natural environment. Practices used in production are more in favor of sustainable development, which is not the case in the south. Other differences are as follows. The term North in this context refers to the developed countries in the North. The South refers to developing countries in the South. There is better infrastructure in the North and poor infrastructure in the South. Over to you Viola. Thank you Kayleen. Now let's conclude the lesson by looking at the effects of the North-South relations on South Africa under the topics Globalization Challenges, Environment and Why Countries in the South Are Not Developed. The countries in the North maintain that globalization is progress. Many developing countries disagree and have the following problems with globalization. There is a growing gap between the rich and the poor. Since 1994, the number of poor people have increased in Africa only. Developing countries that run democratic government and create economic stability still cannot attract foreign investment. Rich countries continue to subsidize the production of agricultural goods, making it difficult for developing countries to compete, while insisting that developing countries eliminate their tariffs on manufactured goods. Sounds unfair right? As a result of globalization, there are threats of major crises in both the regional and world environment. Let's compare the two hemispheres on environment. In northern countries, due to mass consumption, they burn huge amounts of oil and coal. The resulting carbon dioxide has caused damage to the ozone layer and has given rise to global warming. Major environmental challenges faced by the North include air pollution, water pollution, noise pollution, and toxic waste. The developing countries of Africa are affected more than the countries of the North that cause such pollution. Also unfair right? On the other hand, southern countries focus on agriculture and therefore degradation and depletion of land, water and vegetation are the main environmental issues. The inability of these countries to produce sufficient food is the cause of hunger and malnutrition. What do you think should be done to resolve the problems identified? Let us know in the comments section down below. Also drop us a like and also please subscribe for free to our channel. Turn on the notification bell to get notified each time we post. We really appreciate all our viewers for making it possible for us to keep on posting. Today we reached 8,900 subscribers. We only need 1,100 more to reach 10k. Help us get there. Let's find out why countries in the South are not developed. The first reason is lack of aid to develop. Developed countries have refrained from assisting countries in the South because the money is abused by those in power. In this case we blame our leaders for sure. If you are watching this video and you live in the North, please send those millions to me, I'll put the money to good use. Another reason why the North has refrained from assisting is that other countries like Zimbabwe do not welcome donor funding largely because of the aspects or conditions that are attached to the money landed. 
the lending country tends to dictate on what should be done by the money landed. Also the landing country tends to use this as a way to bulldozing its way into interfering with internal affairs of that particular country and also to suck its resources. Another reason why countries in the South are not developed is huge debt caused by high interest rates. Lake of trade is another reason. Northern markets dominate the trade sector by 80%, hence southern countries do not compete effectively. The last reason is poor governance. Corruption, nepotism and economic policies that hinder progress contribute to failure to become developed. Now look at this map that visually shows you the north-south divide. The black dotted line you see here is called a Brandt line which is an imaginary line that divides rich countries in the north from poor countries in the south. Do you see that Australia and New Zealand are geographically located in the south but regarded to be in the north? This is because these two countries are developed countries, unlike all other countries in the south. If you remember very well, I mentioned earlier that as a nation becomes economically developed, they may become part of the north, regardless of geographical location. Another point with regards to geographical location that I'm thinking of right now is that a country like Somalia is geographically located in the northern hemisphere because it is located north of the equator but regarded to be in the south because it's a developing or poor country. As usual we conclude with homework activity 78 on page 180. Question 1. Define the term per capita gross domestic product. 2 marks. Question 2. What measures can the South African government take to reverse the increase in unemployment? 4 marks. Question 3. Explain the negative effects of globalization on South Africa. 6 marks. Question 4. List any three reasons why the countries in the Northern Hemisphere are more developed than those in the Southern Hemisphere. 6 marks. This has brought us to the end of today's lesson. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Also hit the notification bell for you to get notified every time we post new content to our channel. We are also giving away the Distinction Bound Student t-shirts to people who buy more than 10 books. At the moment we have the following textbooks, Economics Grade 10, 11 and 12 plus Business Studies Grades 11 and 12. We are looking forward to adding more books to our catalog. Remember our books come in two versions, Complete and No Answers versions. Complete versions have answers and no answers versions do not. Thank you so much for your support. See you in the next video. God bless.